Oh hey, I normally don't dress up for special occasions unless I'm playing LEGO Marvel Super Heroes, but I'm switching things up right now. This time I wore a purple shirt just to signify I don't know how to flirt. It has now been 10 years since the release of the one thing why I like animals. Fuck beta. It's been a while since I played any game from the FNAF series, and I needed something to strengthen my fear gauge, make myself less vulnerable to heart attacks. Oh. oh. Next time, try giving a damn more. Cool. The last game I played in this series was Pizzeria Simulator. I played a little bit of Ultimate Custom Night, but I realized there's too much stuff happening in it. Some were good, and others were questionable. Even to this day, I still haven't played Security Breach. I'm sure all the bugs are fixed by now, and that the game is running smoothly enough that I can... Do what you want, cause a pirate is free. You are a pirate. Your heart fit of being a pirate is a Do what you want, cause a pirate is free. You are a but unfortunately, there are too many games in my backlog right now, and I'm pretty much all up to date when it comes to the storyline of Five Nights at Freddy's. I didn't play the VR games because I don't have a VR system, I didn't play the AR game because I don't play video games that much on my phone. So for a while, I kind of abandoned the playing FNAF lifestyle, and I did miss it. I played the original 6 games, beat the 6th and 7 nights of those games, except for FNAF 2, night 7 there is too fucking impossible, and mostly achieved everything those games had to offer, and Five Nights at Freddy's was the only horror fra horror game franchise I played for a long time, the first one being Slenderman and the most recent one being the remake of Resident Evil 4. To be clear, I'm not the biggest fan of horror games. If you look at things closely, horror games are quite simple, especially with their gameplay, but their scary factors definitely outshine most of their problems. No matter how much crap the Five Nights at series has gone through, I am not playing Poppy Playtime. Ever. So all of that left me to play Monster Hunter World, replay my childhood games, play some of the hardest games of all time, and introduce myself to Dark Souls 3 all throughout the COVID pandemic. It was a fun time. Fun being lonely. I had a lot of fun catching up to some of the greatest games I've ever played, but I do feel myself getting pulled back to my roots, to the place where my enjoyment for video games began. And it did. Back on December 26, 2019, written by Ellie Cooper and the man himself, Scott Cawthon, the first volume of the Fazbear Frights book series was published under the title of Into the Pit. Now, prior to its release, there were already books and novels about Five Nights at Freddy's that had been published before, but Into the Pit is special because on January 22, 2024, a video game adaptation of the novel was leaked to be in development. Later that day, Scott Cawthon made a reddit post acknowledging the leaks and stating that the game would release for the series 10th anniversary on August 8th. A gameplay trailer was released on June 6th. The game will be the first installment of the series to be in full 2D and made with pixel art. Not much is shown in the trailer other than kids running around and screaming, Bonnie doing the floss, and young Quebble Cop having the ability to travel back in time through a magic ball pit. Believe me when I say this is the least craziest sentence concerning Five Nights at Freddy's. You wouldn't believe the amount of crazy shit that happens here. Why didn't I heard about this game before? I, I just heard this game existed when it finally released. But when the game was released, I picked it up day one because I hadn't played a Five Nights at Freddy's game in a while, and I needed a resurgence. Since I haven't played a Five Nights at Freddy's game for more than 5 years, my memory of the lore is a bit janky, so I went into the pit knowing that a guy dressed in purple murdered a bunch of kids, and those kids took the revenge, but the purple guy has a bunch of relatives, some continued the family murder legacy while others tried stopping it, and there are a bunch of establishments made by the purple guy, and there are a bunch of rabid wild animatronics loose in those establishments, either continuing the family murder legacy or doing their own things, usually much worse than what the purple guy was doing before, but the purple guy somehow keeps coming back, and the cycle repeats. That's not even everything. So we play as a young kid named Oswald, and our dad brought us to a pizzeria because we're broke and for the most obvious reason... Ah, uh, kids... We eavesdrop on the table, hear that there's an abandoned ball pit in this pizzeria, and went inside the room of the ball pit so that we can teach our dad a lesson for bringing us to the same place over and over again. We should do the same with school. We jump into the pit... Hey! 
and somehow travel back in time to when the pizzeria was much more lively. By that, I meant when everything went wrong. At least I got an achievement for playing with my balls. We entered the main show hall and... This is not the right time or place to do that in front of a bunch of kids, Bonnie. We run into a bunch of kids named Chip and Mike, and it's from then we can confirm that we traveled back to the 80s. Yep, this is definitely the place and time. Yin and Yang showed us around the pizzeria and cheated in an arcade game and in a game of tag. But we cheated back at him when we hid inside an animatronic suit. That worked well last time. The lights went out, we saw Spring Bonnie walk across the room, and we played a game called Hold Your Breath. It was a fun time. We returned to the main party hall, everyone is screaming, and oh, would you look at that? There are adults in this room, and they're just running out in panic. Why aren't they fighting back against Mike Cunnilingus Shafton if that fucking suit can snap him inside by just pissing at him? Also, I'm assuming everything in the Five Nights at Freddy's series would happen in America, because why would there be a fucking Chuck E. Cheese outside the land of guns? Not one of these people brought a firearm. Where are the guards? Shouldn't this place have some fucking security? You know what? Screw this. I'm leaving. So that's the new Five Nights at Freddy's game. I mean, I technically beat it. Whatever, I'm jumping back into the pit. Hey! So that's one of the earliest ways you can get this game over with, and definitely one of the worst endings of the game. But that's not how you get the true Five Nights at Freddy's game experience. I pissed my pants several times while playing the original games. I should be doing the same. So we run around the pizzeria looking for Chip and Mike. We get an encounter from Spring Bonnie, gesturing us to come with him. We follow him to into the room and see a bunch of dead corpses on the ground. We ran away from him and jumped back into the pit. Hey! Dad scolded us for hiding from him, Spring Bonnie tries to pull Dad into the pit, ah! but we somehow have more strength than an adult inside a mechanical animatronic suit, so we pull Dad back, and he is somewhat possessed by Spring Bonnie. He drives us home and... doesn't kill us? What? He has the perfect chance to do the most heinous things to a little kid, and he just decides to roam around the house like he just doesn't know that I know this place more than he does, granting me the perfect opportunity to escape from him. Huh? So we grab mom's phone number, distracted Spring Bonnie from the parents' bedroom, and grab dad's phone. I tried entering a number most FNAF fans would know, and it didn't do a damn thing. How? It was the most sensible thing to do, and I was punished for somehow alerting Spring Bonnie. But, as you can see, most of this game revolves around looking for clues and items hiding in various locations. Each location has a specific minigame where you try to hide from Spring Bonnie's vision, either swatting a bunch of bugs, moving to the site that's opposite to his sights, or flashing him. So we call mom, she arrives, dad enters the room, mom doesn't notice his glowing eyes, we return back to our bedroom, we avoided Spring Bonnie, and took the front door to leave the house. We return to Jeff's Pizza, we jump back into the pit, <coughs> we find a kid crying inside an exoskeleton suit. I'm no doctor or shit. But looking at this kid, there's no way he's fucking alive. Dude's just a head in a cog machine. So we need a screwdriver to get him out. Sounds easy enough, right? Because we just have to take out the trash from Jeff since he has the keys to the backstage where the screwdriver is located. Why not just buy a screwdriver? They can't be that expensive. Also, I don't think a 10 year old would be able to tell what kind of screwdriver he needs to unscrew the mechanism that's locking the kid inside. In fact, I don't think he would even know how the exoskeleton suit works. Weren't those animatronic things invented by the guy who started all of this mess, thus making them complicated for a kid to understand? Now that I'm thinking about it, all of this takes place in the 80s, so the exoskeleton suit wouldn't probably be that complicated and the screws might be common and easily seen on the surface. Why am I focusing so much on this one thing? We head back into the pit, we free the kids, Spring Bonnie chased us, we escape and return back home to end the night. Mom is still oblivious to the fact that a guy in a yellow bunny suit is sitting at a dinner table. We head to school, we witness an average American playtime. As we left the school, we witness another traditional American playtime, this time with an immigrant named Gabrielle. We became friends, she gave us her grandpa's sketchbook, which coincidentally happened to contain detailed explanations as to how the animatronics worked. We escape the house through a window, we return to Jeff's Pizza, as soon as we jump back into the pit, the lights went out. This is the thing that happens whenever you travel back to this place. It doesn't happen most of the time, but when it does, you are forced to use your flashlight, which is so power consuming that it can drain a single battery for around a single minute. How does that even work? 
We switch the generator on, the lights went on again, we get caught by Spring Bonnie, we escape, they pry one of the vents open which leads us to the storage. We hear some crying along the hallway, we got chased by Chica, she grabs our food, before we're turning back to get some more food, we got caught by Spring Bonnie, and... Yeah, I get it buddy, your breath stinks, can you let me go now? So we return to the present, and our task is to get a single slice of pizza. Sounds simple, right? Well, all we have to do is to find a rat trap at the mill, jump back into the pit, catch a rat, return to the present time again, and release that rat in front of a local customer so that it distracts Jeff, and we sneak into the kitchen to get a slice of pizza. All of that, because we don't even have the option to just buy a fucking slice of pizza. I know Oswald's family is struggling, but this takes place in the 80s. One slice of pizza shouldn't be that expensive. Whatever, we jump back into the pit. We place the pizza slice at Chica's nest to lure her in. We sneak into the employee's room. We find Mike hiding in the cabinet. We head to the entrance. Mike tells us that Chip might be in the arcade. Spring Bonnie chases us again. We return back home. We wake up the next day to find that the window is now barred. This is something Spring Bonnie does every day. He blocks up your previous exits so you're forced to find other ways to leave the house. This also encourages you to explore more of the house, get to know the best routes whenever you're being chased, the best hiding spots, and maybe find some useful items like batteries. We returned to the school, we got bullied. While we were taking a class, we hallucinated and saw some animatronics. We got another little side quest. Grab our teacher's book in the principal's office. To do that, we must find the keys to the office, search all the available rooms, and return back the book. This really feels like pajamas hand. We head back home, we try the front door only to find out it was now locked. I tried moving the ladder from the attic to the basement but I got caught in the hallway and somehow the ladder disappeared. Okay. I went to the attic to see if the ladder was there but it wasn't. But I found some rope which I used to escape through the attic window. We jump back into the pit. We are supposed to get into the arcade but all the entryways are locked. Apparently the keys to the arcade are in the vent. And it took an embarrassing amount of time looking around the entire pizzeria and every nook and cranny for me to find a shiny object up there. This really is pajama sand. We get the keys, we open the arcade, Bonnie chases us down and blocks up the arcade. Looking at the old sketchbook, Bonnie's electric guitar seems to be the perfect way to distract him from the arcade. We find the guitar backstage only to find it to be missing a string. Now, seeing that there are a lot of spare parts of the animatronics backstage, the missing electric guitar string should be around here right? Well, Oswald thinks that we can find the missing string in the garbage. So we head back to the mill and guess what? Because of some strange coincidence, there happened to be the guitar string we're looking for. What? This is Pajama Sam. What the hell? We got caught by Dylan who somehow in the garbage took a photo of us collecting from the trash. We jumped back into the pit. <coughs> We fix Bonnie's guitar, played it on stage, grab Bonnie's attention away from the arcade, we sneak into the arcade, we find Chip getting bonked to death, we freed him, we got chased down by Freddy and Spring Bonnie, and we returned home. We went back to school, we got bullied once more by Dylan. I'm surprised he's not still out thinking of the dub. Okay, bitch, you got to the garbage before me, asshole. Don't act like you were expecting me to come over there with your camera at the ready like your dick Tracy when you're just picturing your dick Tracy in the worst possible place to take dick pics. Dylan. More like, disrespect junior. You're pissing me off, fuck you. We return to the pizzeria. Now that the entrance to the arcade is open, you can gain access to a bunch of broken down arcade machines, which you can fix through several specific items. Yeah, I can wait for the whole saving my dad from a sentient killer animatronic shtick. I need to grind these minigames. This section is brought to you by my severe gambling addiction from playing too much blackjack and Fallout 2 games. Depending on how much random stuff you collect throughout the entire game, the number of arcade machines you can repair can vary. However, most of these are quick and simple little games. The reward for playing all of these games is tickets which you can use to get a voucher. I never figured out how to get a voucher. It might need all of the arcade machines fixed or you have to play all of them, but I scoured through every possible location I could get to before jumping into the pit. But I couldn't find any more repair parts. Alright then, we have nothing left to do but jump back again into the pit. After following the scream and getting jumped by Spring Bonnie from out of nowhere, we find that Freddy is blocking the entrance to the security room. 
Now, we could just use our dad's phone and, and call someone so that when it rings loudly, Freddy can come out of the room, but no, that's a bit too clever to do. Sometimes they're just too smart for games. We escape the pizzeria, head back to the library, and meet the firecracker kid. We exchange the Freddy mask with the firecrackers, and at this point, we should just get a firearm. We already have a fire hazard, it wouldn't hurt a bit. And to those who are saying, Actually, Oswald is just a kid. Fuck you, this takes place in America. Anyone can have guns, even newborn infants. Also, why didn't the security guards from each entry in the franchise carry a handgun? What if someone broke into the place and stole a bunch of pizzas? What's the security guard gonna do? Preserve electricity? One last thing, I don't care how bulky the animatronics are, but a few rounds would definitely shut them down well. Have you seen how fragile these things are built? Where was I? Before we could return to the pizzeria, our dad dragged us back home, so now we have only one option to get out of the house, through the basement. We first need to find the ladder located in the attic, and every step you take while carrying this thing causes a lot of noise, so getting into the basement can be quite tricky. Nonetheless, we escape our abusive stepdad, we return to the pizzeria, play a few more minigames, and jump back into the pit. We head back to the storage, lit the firecracker, distract Freddy, and sneak quietly into the room. We find a kid who's huddled up in a corner, the phone guy returns and does his usual stuff. Now, I can't imagine that you'd stay there very late at night. So I guess you don't need to worry about the whole animatronic situation, blah, blah, blah. If you really have nothing to do after work and want to stay a little bit longer, play some games in the arcade. Not every machine works, though. We check the cameras, spring bodies blocking the exit, we leave the room, boop, and return to the room, but the kid is missing. We look through the cameras, spring body has the kid in another room, get the hammer from the arcade, stuck into the kitchen, and help the kid escape. Spring body catches us, and we escape, we begin the next day by having another nightmare, we headed to Jeff's pizza right away, but the door to the ball pit was blocked. We find Jeff playing solitaire and convince him to give us the keys. What the hell was the point of that? After that, Spring Bonnie somehow chases us all the way to the ball pit, we hide from Spring Bonnie and hear another child screaming, this time coming from the party room. The key card is found backstage, however the entrance stair is blocked. We use the vents, enter the backstage, find the key card among the cluster of animatronic parts, we head back, open the party room and find another kid. She told us that she heard our dad screaming through the vents, we get there, find our dad tied up in a chair and try to get him out. When Spring Bonnie comes in and drags dad out of the room, we chase him down to the ball pit, we escaped, but Spring Bonnie dragged us back and now we are the ones trapped. That is a suspicious looking enemy. So that's into the pit, but is that everything the game has to offer? Well, so far I only got two of the endings, both of which aren't the best. One of the better endings requires you to get all of dad's items, which shows you a scene where Oswald and his dad reunite safely. Another requires you to fix all of the arcade machines and play three secret minigames, showing you a scene of the entire family enjoying their time together in a brand new and renovated version of Jeff's Pizza, which is actually the true ending of the game. The last ending happens if you fail the quick time event on the final night, where you become one of the animatronics. Obviously, the ending where the entire family is together is my favorite, but the other endings are alright. As for the entire story, it's alright. I haven't read the novel so I couldn't really compare or say much about how well the story is adapted into the game. The story is pretty simple, it's not as deep or complex as the other games since I know that Into the Pit is not entirely canon to the FNAF lore. This I like. For someone who hasn't played FNAF or has been keeping up to date on the timeline, it's nice to have a game that's not too complex in terms of story. What I don't like is how you are forced to do some side quests while you're trying to do the main story. These aren't your traditional side quests. In this game, they only exist just so the gameplay can be a bit longer. I don't really like that when it happens in video games. The way it is done here feels like annoying little tangents, and they don't even add anything to the actual story of the game, so it just makes it feel more useless. Again, I didn't read the novel, but I feel like if some of the side characters like the kids you meet at school were somewhat more involved in the story, I think the story could be a bit better. Gabrielle, the girl who gave us her grandpa's journal, I feel could have helped Oswald in his search for his dad, although Oswald probably wouldn't do that. What I'm just saying here is that a few characters' involvement in the story could help bring things to life a little. The gameplay is not much to know, it's just your simple 2D puzzle game. 
I do love the art style though, I think this is what Security Breach should have been. That's not to say that Security Breach breaking the traditional boundaries of FNAF by being an open 3D is terrible. I love how the gameplay in Security Breach looks, it doesn't feel too alienated from the traditional FNAF gameplay, I just think that the art style feels a bit too cartoonish at times. Which is off-putting for me since I believe that FNAF shines the best when it's bloody and disgusting. In this game, however, the art style is intentional. It's supposed to replicate how the novel looked, and I respect that. I love this game. I just don't think it's better than the original 7 games. I'd say it's on par with FNAF World, although FNAF World has more content, but I still love Into the Pit. It's definitely better than what most AAA video game companies are releasing this year. Well, I can officially say that this is one of the better Halloweens I've had in a while. But Halloween involves trick-or-treating and trick-or-treating involves candies and I still haven't had any candies POLICE! Oh no, it's the... Pulis